Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear friends. I pray you're all well. Okay, let's resume. Let's resume our tafsir. Al Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا ونفعنا بما علمتنا ومنحنا يا ربنا علما وعملا وقربا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وأرض عنا يا كريم أوكي سو الحمد لله in the previous verses, uh, we looked at the Ashabul A'raf, the people on the heights, this area between <coughs> between paradise and hell. And we saw how they would respond uh, when they saw the blessings that the people of paradise are in and the, the punishment and torment of the people of the hellfire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then follows by telling us, uh, bringing us back to the dunya, by saying, وَلَقَدَ جِئْنَاهُمْ بِكِتَابٍ فَصَّلْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ هُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ Wow, this is another verse, you know. They're all amazing. You know, but just full of confidence, right? وَلَقَدْ But he said, we have certainly bought them a book by which we explained, which we explained with knowledge. A guide and mercy for those who believe. So he says, by God, I swear. Allah swearing an oath to really emphasize the truth of this matter. Humanity, you want guidance, you want things to go right, you want think you want to be in a better position on the day of judgment, you want to benefit in the maximal way in this life and in the next. What to do? Devote yourselves to God. And what's the means to that? To that Walaqada Jitnahum Bikitabin. By God we have brought them. So Ja'a literally means to come and then Ja'a be. Uh, or atabi uh, to come, or it, it means to bring something. So Allah has said He brought this, He's presented it to us. Not that literally He's moved from place to place, but He's prevented presented it to us. The royal we, and then also I said Ja'a and Jitna comes from the uh, same root Jit. Um, it has a meaning of the one who's coming is tremendous, or what He's coming with is tremendous, or the one who's coming to is tremendous. You can glean those meanings. So the royal we, and he's tremendous, and if Allah is the supreme perfect creator, the supreme king, then whatever book he's given us also is going to reflect his perfection and majesty and greatness. And it does. وَلَقَدْ جِئْنَاهُمْ By God, we have certainly brought them a tremendous, amazing book. The book that clarifies right from wrong, it encourages to do that which benefits us. It dis deters us from doing the things that are harmful f for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents it in a way where we're given reminders that soften the heart. We're given promises that make the heart long for the good Allah has saved for us, stored for us in, in the Akhirah. We're given threats so we don't want to go near the things that uh, are, are being threatened with the punishments. And then there's the rulings that tell us how to live our life in a practical way. Someone who lived their life according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fully will have a wholesome beautiful life the way they will be with people the way people will be with them even if people are bad to them they know how to respond in the best of ways sometimes you know there's some strength you show and sometimes you overlook matters and it's a beautiful sunnah of the prophet the entire sunnah and living that you know it's it is applying the book and then he says ala ilmin and we gave we detailed it like I said all the rulings are detailed and all of the reminders and all of these things are, are, are clarified in a way that leaves no confusion and then he says ala ilmin ilm here knowledge but it's indefinite the word and as you know and as we've said many a time something that's indefinite can have various connotations and one of the meanings here is that it's something tremendous supreme amazing right huge so ilmin so Allah is 
ahal hi ala ilmin but it means tamakkun so it's as though someone is on top of something another thing and they have complete control of it so it's as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here um yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, like Sayyid Tantawi puts it beautifully, uh, that the Qur'an, that, what, that which is in the Qur'an of these details and the, the rulings and details and guidance, um, it, didn't, it didn't just happen. It didn't just <coughs> occur to someone's mind and then they just wrote it all down. No, it happened because uh, it, it is the way it is and the details are the way they are because of the perfect knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every single thing that the Quran has contains many benefits and the ways of avoiding many forms of harm so ala ilmin is saying that we brought you this book that we have detailed in it all the forms of guidance and that's not just happened you know by by chance it's not a fluke rather it's the it's the work of someone who has perfect, complete, supreme knowledge. And he knows what's right, what's good, what's wise. This being has given this book. So anyone with a, you know, an understanding of what's good for them would want to come to this book and say, let me take the maximum amount of benefit I can from this because all of it is going to be good. And that's what it is. That's why he's hooded. And it states how, what is the state of this book? It's hooded, perfect guidance. I like how they translate this as perfect guidances. It's not just something that, yeah, if you do it, you'll, you'll end up, you'll land on your feet, you'll be okay. No, perfect guidance, right? Warahmatan is perfect guidance and a tremendous source of mercy. It is a mercy, the book, because the guidance and the benefit that comes with it the book and those who live by the book and apply the book and take the guidance of the book this is liqawmi yu'minun for a people so tremendous guidance and the book was given and it was detailed and you know uh, it's a tremendous perfect guidance and tremendous mercy for people who believe so it's for everyone right but who really benefits is the per people who actually believe and the people who have the potential of believing and they choose to believe and then they choose to look at the book and their iman helps them take on all of this good that comes in the book and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us hal yanzuruna illa ta'wilahu do they only await the fulfillments of its warning? What are they doing? Right? Uh, are they waiting for anything besides the fulfillment of its warning? Understand it like that. يَوْمَ يَأْتِي تَأْوِيلُهُ يَوْمَ يَأْتِي تَأْوِيلُهُ يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ نَسُوهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ قَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلُ رَبِّنَا بِالْحَقِّ And what a powerful verse this is. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa so ta'ala says the day uh, it will be fulfilled. Those who ignored <coughs> it before will say the, mess the messengers of our Lord certainly came with the truth. And what they've said, it continues uh, in the rest of the verse. Let's just look at this. So, <coughs> it means look, but what are the, the meaning when it comes to are they waiting for anything but? They're waiting for something and they're not waiting for anything else besides this particular thing. So, illa ta'wil hu ta'wil awl is something to end up in a particular state. So, the ta'wil, that's why ta'wil is used for interpreting the Quran. There's all these possible meanings, but where does it end? Or you can say, what are the final implications of the meaning of the verse? But here in this context, what does ta'wil mean? Ta'wil is this, what it means is. <coughs> Uh, Allah has promised us, and uh, so he in this context is a, is a threat. <coughs> Allah has threatened the disbelievers with a punishment in the Akhirah and uh, the occurrence of the judgment and hell. So the ta'wil of that, so the end, the final actual manifestation is when it actually happens, when they're resurrected and they're th sent to hell. So they say oh, we don't believe in whatever so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you know what are they doing besides 
waiting for the manifestation of this threat. That's what it's basically saying. But here the word yanzurun and there's a word in Arabic yanzurun to look and there's a word in Arabic which is uh, yantaviroon which is to wait. And the meaning is are they waiting for anything besides the final manifestation? Uh, but uh, he didn't put the put it in the the word form of waiting. He put it in the word form of looking, because when you're waiting, you're looking for something to appear. He put it in the word form of uh, looking, not waiting. Why? Kullu atin qarib, as the Arabs say, anything that is coming for certain is close. Whether it takes a thousand years, it's close because it's certainly going to happen. If it's certainly going to happen, then the time between now and when it does happen, it's, it's irrelevant. Right, so it's coming for sure. So it's as though there's such certainty of it's happening. It's as though they're looking at it, are coming right now in front of them. Right, and even the disbelievers, what do they do? They hide the truth, don't they? And it's not like they don't know the truth. Someone who doesn't know is excused, but they they know and then they hide it. So in reality, they are waiting. They're expecting it. Now they can put it out of their mind, but their state is that the reality is that they're waiting for it. When it comes, it's going to come and, you know, slap them in the face, so to speak. So he says, يَوْمَ يَأْتِي تَأْوِيلُهُ When it's final fulfillment, when it does occur, what will happen? يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ نَسُوهُ Those who forgot it, and forgot like we talked about last time, isn't literally forgetting. It's um, <coughs> neglecting and ignoring those who ignored um, ignored the threat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta'ala but he used this word once again because it suits what was said before but also to show uh, their attitude like they, imagine that someone's on a, on a road uh, playing like a kid on a, not a kid you know, let's say someone's uh, playing on a road and there's a car coming from a distance and this person sees the cars there but then he just carries on, like he, he'll crouch down, start tying his shoelace, like he knows the car's coming, but he acts like uh, he's forgotten. He acts like he might have seen it, but then it's gone out of his memory. Like if you've forgotten something, uh, it's not on your mind. Like what color socks did you wear six months ago, right, to the day? Uh, you don't remember and uh, you know even if you took your mind back to you chances are you won't remember uh, it's not in your mind so that's the way they lived their life the way they mistreated the believers the way they you know did wrongs left right and center not caring about the consequences on the day of judgment that's how they lived their life so those who ignored it and forgot about, conveniently forgot about it right min uh, qabl just before so it's as though like one moment they're in this state of uh, their heedless, they're ignoring the day of judgment, and then the next moment it's there in front of them. They can't avoid it, they can't escape it, it's there. They have to live with the consequences now. It's as though it's happening straight away. So, those people on that day, uh, what will they say? Amazing, amazing. They say, Certainly, truly, Ja'at, once again, uh, the people are amazing. The messengers of our loving Lord. Our dear Lord, now they see him as loving because, you know, he was because he sent them the messengers with the guidance, with the promises of good and, you know, the promises of safety and protection, all of these things. That's what he, he sent the messengers with, but they ignored it. So now they say, certainly, without a doubt, the many messengers of our Lord came with the truth, the truth that w was perfect, that was wise, fitting, appropriate, the best, right? And all these meanings you can say, um, come with the weird word haq here, that it's the wise, appropriate, right, correct, fitting, you know, you know uh, truth. Uh, so the details that came with it are what's for everyone's benefit. And that's what they'll say. And they'll say, what is it? It's not factually them saying this. This is them saying with regret and remorse and they're kicking themselves, biting down on their hands in of the worst sort of frustration and anger. And, you know, it's, you know, sometimes people are angry at themselves because of doing something that's not to their benefit. But here is the worst form. يَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدِهِ 
the day when the volume will bite down can you imagine just biting down really hard on your hands because you're so frustrated at what you've done yourself right this is what they'll do right and then uh, all that frustration will be manifested so they say, you know, certainly the messengers of our Lord came with the truth. فَهَلْ لَنَا مِنْ شُفَعَاءَ فَيَشْفَعُوا لَنَا أَوْ نُرَدُّ فَنَعْمَلَ غَيْرَ الَّذِي كُنَّا نَعْمَلْ So they say, so are there any intercessors who can plead on our behalf? Or can we be sent back so we may do good? Uh, unlike what we used to do. قَدْ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَضَلَّ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ They have certainly ruined themselves and whatever gods they fabricated will fail them. So what, is it, what are they saying? They know, they recognize, yes, the prophets came with the truth, but we messed up. We were, you know, we ignored them. So they're in a situation now because they know the threat is going to come true. True. They know what they were told is going to happen. So what do they want? They want to escape it. So they know their deeds aren't worth anything because there's no reward for their disbelief. And their disbelief has invalidated the reward of any good that they did before. So they say, okay, there's two ways. Either we remain with our deeds now and someone comes and asks uh, and intercedes for us. So, uh, Are there any intercessors? So they see that the Prophet ﷺ intercedes for all of humanity. Would he intercede for us? Would another Prophet or the messengers that came to, the, to, the, you know, to, to them from Allah, would they intercede? Um, their idols aren't going to intercede. So that's what they're asking. Uh, are there any intercessors, anyone out there who would intercede for us? Oh, so if we can't uh, escape from our deeds then, and there's no one to intercede for us, Oh, نُرَدُّ فَنَعْمَلَ غَيْرَ الَّذِي كُنَّا نَعْمَلُ Or, uh, can we be sent back? i.e. back to the dunya to relive their lifespan relive all the days and the situations that they had the choice to do good in can that happen so can we be sent back uh, so and then we do something other other than what we used to do so like actions that are the exact opposite of what they used to do so now they recognize what we did all wrong, nothing of the good. We'd go back and we'd change. And we know from, you know, Surah Al-An'am, that when they sent back, they say, you know, I'll send us back and we'll be different, same words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا you know, if they were sent back, they'd do exactly the same thing all over again. So, in any way, so here they're panicking. What can we do? How can we get away with it? Will someone intercede? Or can we be sent back a second chance? And Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَدْ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ They've lost out on themselves. This is like, you know, trade language here, right? You know, you had your capital, which is your life. This life that you had that you could have devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That capital, you've lost. Right? It's someone who takes all the money he has, goes into a business venture, and, you know, in the middle of a, a desert, uh, he sets up a, a business uh, making ice sculptures. Right? <laughs> How long is that going to last? And then he's lost it all. It's all evaporated away. قَدْ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Their own precious souls, they've lost They've lost the opportunity of saving themselves uh, and having a lot of good from uh, That which they kept on habitually concocting the lies that they kept fabricating. So if there are, as we said about cutting leather, you know, so they would make up these particular lies. Yes, there are these idols and they do this for us and they'll do that. And he says, They'll be lost to them. Meaning, like something that's lost, you can't benefit from it. You have a five pound note in your pocket and then uh, uh, you go out and you're thirsty, you, know, you walk into a shop to buy a drink, but you can't find it. It's lost. 
What good is our five five pounds gonna do to you? Go do for you nothing. Same with these people here. Well, dalla anhum ma kanu yafterun. All the things they used to fabricate and lie are lost. <sighs> Allah protect us. And now we have the next verse is just really beautiful as well. All of these verses, honestly, uh, this one is. Uh, Particularly, and there's, there's a section of it, I used to hear this Imam recite it, and it's so powerful, right? It just displays the, the perfection and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is under His control, His sway. He is the ultimate dominant ruler, king, the supreme being. Everything else is subject to his will. إِلَى الْمَشِيئَةِ يَسْتَنِدُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ وَلَيْسَتْ هِيَ تَسْتَنِدُ إِلَى شَيْءٍ As Sayyidi Ahmad ibn Atta'illah said that everything is dependent on the divine will, on Allah's will. And, and Allah's will is not subject to anything, right? It's amazing. So he says, so just to prove, so, uh, you know, that they've lost out and they're going to be punished, right? And... A, to show he has the capacity and ability to punish them, and B, that the biggest crime they did, those particular people, was shirk or disbelief in general. And who are they disbelieving in primarily? The Lord, Allah. So now we're told what the, who this Lord is. Would you disbelieve? Could you, how could you disbelieve this Lord? Inna Rabbakum Allahu alladhi khalaqa samawati wal arda fi sitati ayyam. ثم استوى على العرش يغشي الليل النهار يطلبه حثيثا واو Indeed, your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days, then established himself on the throne. He makes the day and the night overlap in rapid succession. Oof. Let's look at this. The Arabic is just really amazing. إن ربكم الله Indeed, without a doubt, so it's connected to us before. This is this is the Lord you disbelieved in. Indeed, nominal sentence within a highly emphasized. Truly, this is your your Lord, your loving Master, your your Maker, the Lord who gives you your blessings, takes you from one stage to higher stages to your perfected state. If you reach your potential, is Allah the Supreme King? Inna Rabbakum Allahu Ladi خلق السماوات والأرض is the one who created the heavens so here it means the skies what does it mean our universe all of it is just one sky we could say one heaven and it's uh, within it's like a, a ring in a vast desert compared to the next one right so we're in within a larger uh, universe and that's within an even larger one and that's within an even larger one and there's seven like this and then that all of that is surrounded by the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the throne of Allah is not a chair rather it's a creation Allah has created uh, and uh, to manifest his power and if such a supreme huge creation is under his control what is earth what is this little planet, you know, somewhere in the Milky Way with, you know, these beings who walk around on it? Some of them uh, think that they're, you know, they're the best thing in existence and others fewer, but others who take the noblest part of their faces, their bodies, their faces, and they lower it on their grounds, recognizing the perfection of Allah. What is all of this compared to the throne? Although there are places on earth that are greater than the throne, such as the Kaaba and the, the grave of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? That's better than any other place in existence. Um, as the ulama have said, there's a ijma on that. So, indeed, your uh, is Allah the Supreme King. Then Allah the shows he's famous for this. Famous as in... It's, it should be, the matter should be treated as though it's known by everyone. Even though this, they disbelieve and they disregard it, you disregard anyone that disregards this fact. Because this is the reality. So the seven skies, if they're so huge, then why mention earth? Because it's relevant to us. We are on the earth, it's relevant to us. And it's the place where some of the greatest actions ever have occurred that's why it's significant the, the place where prophets have struggled and strived 
and faced difficulties for decades, for years, for millenn- for centuries, right? For a millennium, was Sayyidina Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam, trying to show people the way to God, the guidance and the rahmah that God has sent. Those actions were amazing actions. It's the place where believers who struggle with, you know, the problems of their lives, whether it's their health or it's their children or it's their family or it's their enemies or whatever it is and despite those struggles they keep proceeding forward to Allah I will pray today I will ask Allah my needs I will be a servant to Allah yesterday broke me I will still get up and pray today today may break me but I will still do this tomorrow as long as there's breath in my body these actions are significant and you may look at a person and think he's insignificant but he might be tremendous in the sight of Allah so this these actions happen right fi sittati ayyam and he is translated as in six days uh, Days in Arabic, the word ayam, yawm in Arabic, can, it doesn't necessarily mean day, day, right? It can mean, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean day. It can mean any period of time, right? And so a day for us, like in the, for the Arabs, a day was from sunrise to sunset. We'll use a day in some contexts, uh, you know, to mean 24 hours. So it's not saying he created it in seven days like that. And is not measuring it through the 24 hours that we have. And we know this from observable data as well, right? So how you would translate this is seven eons. Seven large, sorry, six large stretches of time. And regardless of what the physicists and the astrophysicists say, right? What the Quran has said is true. And we've seen in, in his Islamic history, people have tried to uh, show all oh, the Quran is wrong. Like with the issue with the mountains, um, this is how can you know the mountains be keeping the earth stable? And then we found that the mountains have huge roots. You know, these the huge blocks of stone that keep the te- tectonic plates from slipping. And so people used to poke holes or try to poke holes in the Quran, saying, "Oh, look, the Quran is saying this," but ultimately Allah knows his creation best right so so uh, in six eons or six large expanses of time and don't get bogged down well they say well the big bang had these you know, whatever the big bang whatever we know how uh, we know that it was six stages or six expanses of time and the detail we'll, we'll leave it to God and he'll show it all if you want to see on the day of judgment right rather in paradise when you when you're there rather take the guidance from it that this supreme king made everything in stages and you know the earth in you know in stages and you know it was all volcanoes and then the volcano was throwing up lava and then that's how you got the land masses started from Makkah and then all the surrounding land masses from there all of this stuff right then he established himself on the throne this verse there's a few couple of verses like this istiwa in the Quran and the last thing you should understand from this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sitting on a throne no the throne is mentioned 21 times in the Quran and this statement istawa uh, al arsh is mentioned seven times in every context you'll find that uh, everywhere is mentioned is mentioned the context of creation and the things that Allah has created and running matters so you could say he reigned supreme on the throne I've heard the translation, he assumed the throne. You could say that, but um, uh, that's not the meaning. The stronger meaning is he reigned. What does a king do when he reigns? Meaning he is the one calling the shots. He's commanding and he's forbidding and what, he's, what he wills is done. This is what the verse is saying. That Allah. So the early Muslims, there's a whole thing about this. Someone came to Imam Malik. Uh, and uh, asked about this Ar Rahman Al Al Arsh Istawa, like the verse from Surah Taha. And he said, The All Merciful has uh, established himself on the throne or reigns supreme on the throne, as I prefer. And so, so he said, How? Now, this is a person who's picking certain verses that uh, some may understand literally, and he's trying to cause confusion. So he said, Al Kayf Ghair Ma'kul. 
Right? غير معقول. The how is something beyond our understanding. Allah is beyond what we can conceptualize with our minds. والاستفاء غير مجهول. والاستواء غير مجهول. And استواء, its meaning is not uh, is not something hidden. Like we know it. It's not something we're ignorant of. We know what it means. How well, we can't rush. We can't conceptualize it. والإيمان به واجب. And believing in it is is واجب. It's an incumbent. Allah said it. We believe. والسؤال عن Bid'ah and asking about it is an innovation in deen, right? There are two positions, two valid positions. One of the early Muslims in which they negated the literal meaning. So, it, and nowhere in, in Arabic does it mean uh, istiwa means to sit, right? There's a whole uh, there's a particular, uh, a particular group of meanings, but none of the meanings means to sit. Some of them. Heterodox deviant uh, positions where they said Allah subhanahu wa, ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala sits on the throne and this is wrong because that would entail he has a body and that the throne encompasses his body. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. That's laysa ka mithlihi shay. There's nothing like him whatsoever as the Quran says in Surah Ashura, which says that there's nothing like him whatsoever. Can you imagine someone sat on a chair and the chair fitting his his form if you can then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be like that according to this verse right there's nothing like him whatsoever he doesn't resemble his creation so uh, so the position of the Salaf the early first three centuries uh, uh, and generation first three generation is that they would say we negate important point we negate the literal meaning and then the beyond that what it means it's Allah knows best, which is exactly what Imam Malik is saying. We can't understand it, we're not going to delve into it. That's the position of the Salaf, and it's called Tafweed, assigning the meaning to Allah. Oh Allah, you know best what you meant here. Then the position of later scholars after the first three centuries, the Khalaf, still valid and still you know rightly guided and you know authoritative scholars they said no uh, we're going to, uh, what this is, is we're going to um, go with that wheel uh, a valid interpretation that fits in with the principles of the Quran like the verse I mentioned and the Arabic language and one of the meanings of istiwa is to reign uh, one of the Arab poets said قَدْ إِسْتَوَى بِشْرٌ عَلَى الْعِرَاقِ مِنْ غَيْرِ سَيْفٍ وَلَا دَمٍ مِحْرَاقِ where he said Bishr reigned over Iraq without any sword and without any shed blood right a bloodshed you could say uh, but blood which has been shed so shed blood anyway uh, so this is what uh, he says uh, what the Arab uh, used his, his, he used this line in this way so this is basically so he reigns supreme on the throne then he says يُغْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارِ يَطْلُبُهُ حَثِيثًا so eloquent and it's amazing this and you know subhanallah so he says that he says he makes the, the the night cover the day. Now this can only really be understood by someone who sees that the earth is a globe. And what's happening? Let me I'll give you a visual aid. Here the sellotape, right? <laughs> okay. So um, the earth, one side you're getting light from the sun, it's lit up and it's revolving around the sun. So there's one side always facing the sun, and there's one side that's not facing the sun. But it's uh, rotating on its axis, right? So you're always going to get one side, even though it's rotating, facing the sun, and another side that's not. So what he's saying, يُغْشِ اللَّيْلَ nahar, And then the opposite is true as well. The night completely covers over the day. So it's as though, it's as though, um, it's as though, the Rashayan uh, is something covering something else up so you can't see it, right? So it's as though the daytime, imagine uh, imagine someone's got a blanket and he's trying to throw the blanket on a child but the child's running away from him. And uh, every time he throws it on the child, the child runs out from under it and carries on, right? So uh, just imagine this, So the, the, let's look at the description and I'll explain it the other way. يُغْشِ اللَّيْلَ nahar. He makes the night cover over the day, cover the day up. And then he says, يَطْلُبُهُ hafitha. The night is seeking the day, chasing the day with 
effort might mend really quickly. It's as though the night is running after the day to cover it up. And just look at this. You see when the daytime uh, ends, it's as though the night comes over in your sky, right? So he's saying the night is chasing the day uh, to cover it up. And now let's imagine the earth as a globe. So there's, and this works great when you're looking at it on, say, on a plane, even they have the screen and how. So what you're looking at earth and half of it's lit up and half of it's dark, but it's spinning, right? So what's happening, the areas that are daytime, so if you look at London, it's daytime and you wait a couple of hours, it's gone to where, where Istanbul was, you know, a couple of hours before that. And then a couple of hours it moves, it goes to where, um, where um, Moscow is. Right, so it's moving. So it's as though, if you look at it from one perspective, it's as though the night time is striving to cover up the areas where the day was. Right, it's just so beautiful. So the, the globe, you look, if you're looking, looking at it from space, just fixed in uh, in one space, and you're watching it, you'd see like the area where the day is, night is encroaching on it. It's chasing that area, chasing after the day to cover up everywhere the day was. But then if you look on the other side, the day is chasing after all the areas where the night is. And then it's, it's covering that darkness with light. It's a beautiful description. Only someone, only Allah could have said this. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said this. Someone who knows the reality of this matter. And here, even a thousand years after this, or close to a thousand years after this was revealed, the Christians were saying, no, uh, earth is the center of the universe. Right? And this is revelation from God. What a beautiful, eloquent, really eloquent description. Is seeking him with his air. Every effort, might and main, you know, with oh, in everything, his, the night's will is bent on catching up with the day, and the day's will is bent in, in covering over the night. Wow. And then he says, وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ He created the sun and the moon. وَالنُّجُومَ He created the sun and the moon and the stars. مُسَخَّرَاتٍ بِأَمْرِهِ each and every one of them is completely subjected and subjugated to his will, right? Now you can you can see, like Imam uh, Lucy says here, you can use the word will. Amr here normally means command, but you can also mean will. Allah wills for the sun to move in this way and the moon to move in this way and the stars, and, you know, to burn and, you know, die out and everything like that. Allah wills it. So it's as though... If you say command literally, it's as though you're treating them as living animate things and they've been commanded and then they're obeying that command. Musakharatin, subjected, forced, forced into submission almost, right? Musakhar, you know, it's just being made to submit to his command. But it's his will. Allah wills it and he makes it happen that way. Allah, lahu al khalqu wal amr. Allah, listen up, pay attention. Something important is going to be said. His is the creation. All of creation is His, or His is the creating, right? That creating things, it's, it's His role. He does everything. Uh, or the he, creation, that's the stronger one. Wal uh, amr, and the command. All the control of everything, the command through which everything is controlled is His, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tabarakallahu Rabbul Alameen. And for Tabaraka, I do recommend, uh, we explain Surah Al-Mulk in detail, uh, and it's covered there in detail, detail but, uh, but Tabaraka has a meaning of the, the good that Allah is sending down is profuse and a huge amount. It's also talking about Him being permanent. And so from that permanence, you can get the meaning of His perfection. So tremendous is the good that comes to us from this supreme, perfect, tremendous being, Tabarakallah. That's what it means. Rabbul Alameen, the supreme Lord, master, creator, maker, sustainer of the everything that exists, especially the rational beings, the men and the jinn, so they should submit and humble themselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anyone. What a beautiful, beautiful verse. Honestly, there's much more that could be said. But let's stop here. Allah bless you all. 
and uh, we'll continue from this point insha'Allah wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen